Greetings and welcome to video series 10 where we are going to be talking about graph databases and in particular Neo4j. Now considering the five genres of database management systems, Neo4j is of course a graph database and graph databases are designed to handle a fundamentally different type of problem than all the databases we've discussed so far. Now, most databases are concerned about things, whereas a graph database is more concerned about the relationships between things. And it's this need to understand this network of interconnected entities that has driven the development of Neo4j. Now, as we're going to see in the upcoming videos, we talked to Neo4j using a language called Cypher. And actually there's an open version of Cypher called OpenCypher that can be used to communicate with other types of graph databases as well. As we'll demonstrate in next week's videos, we can also interact with Neo4j using a REST API, similar to the way we interacted with CouchDB. Now, what makes Neo4j unique? Well, it's this ability to deal with massive and complex and sometimes unbounded relationships. While relational databases are pretty good at dealing with simple relationships, when we get relationships that are three or four or even an unknown number of levels deep, our performance will quickly degrade. Whereas Neo4j and other graph databases are able to handle this uh, type of complex relationship with no problem. It's just what they are designed to do. So we have unmatched performance for traversing these complex and deep relationships. Now, as far as scalability goes, the enterprise version of Neo4j does allow for some high availability and clustering and replication and things like that. But for the most part, we want to keep our graph stored on one machine just for performance reasons. So there is some scalability and some room to grow, uh, but by and large, uh, graph databases are going to work best when confined to a single machine. So, Going a little bit further into depth in the comparison of Neo4j to other databases we've talked about so far is typically the databases we've talked about have had two main elements, a key and some value or set of values that are associated with that key. Our graphs, on the other hand, have three components, nodes, relationships, and properties. So we sometimes hear graph databases referred to as triples. And as I mentioned before, unlike most non-relational databases, Neo4j is really concerned about relationships. And relational databases also deal with relationships. However, most of our non-relational databases don't even really have the concept of having relationships between objects in the database. So Neo4j is very different than the other non-relational database management systems we've talked about in that regard. Now, one of the really neat things about a graph database is it is easy to understand a graph even if we don't understand anything about the database. And Neo4j is said to be whiteboard compatible, meaning that anything we can draw on a whiteboard, we can also capture in our Neo4j graph. And our query language, Cypher, is what's called a pattern-based language. And they describe this as using ASCII art to represent the patterns that we want to query in Neo4j. So we have nodes that are wrapped in parentheses and relationships that are wrapped in these square braces, and then these dashes and directional arrows that describe the way the relationship works. Okay, so we could represent our Cypher query by something, saying something like we have a node that is a student and that student has an attribute of name and a value of Tom for that name and is in a relationship with this course, Bizan 6356, in that Tom has completed that course and has a property of grade and a value of A for that property uh, with his completed relationship. And we might have another node that represents the professor of the course and that, and that professor has a relationship with the course in that they taught the course. And of course, we can have multiple students, we can have multiple courses, we can have multiple professors, and anything that we could think to be able to draw this out on a whiteboard, we can model this in uh, Neo4j and we can query it using the Cypher language. So we're going to see in the upcoming videos exactly how we go about doing that. So in video 10.1, we're going to have a little bit more of an in-depth discussion about uh, the benefits of graph databases and when their use is appropriate. 
In video 10.2, we're going to look at basic create, read, update, and delete operations. And then in video 10.3, we're gonna go a little bit more in depth into our Cypher queries and also talk about indexing and creating constraints. In next week's set of video, we're going to be getting much more in depth into the syntax of Cypher queries and really see the power of Neo4j. But until then, let's go ahead and get started with video 10.1.